And this campaign <clears throat> is different, not just because of the vision that we have, but because of the kind of campaign we are running. Let me be very straightforward with you. No president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can take on the Koch brothers, can take on corporate America, can take on the corporate media all by himself. We, we need, we need a grassroots political revolution. States of America. And to do that, and to do that, I need your help, not just during the campaign. I will need your help the day after the election as well. because we are telling the truth. We are talking to the reality of American life today. We are talking about a reality in which almost all of the wealth and income in this country is going to the top 1%. We are talking about the United States having more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth, and we are going to change that. generated today going to the top 1% and we are going to change that. The issue of income and wealth inequality in its broader sense is the great moral issue of our time, the great economic issue of our time, the great political issue of our time, and we together are going to address it. There is something profoundly wrong when the top one-tenth of one percent owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. There is something profoundly wrong when in recent years we have seen a proliferation of millionaires and billionaires and yet today we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country on earth. There is something profoundly wrong when one family, the owners of Walmart, own more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people. There is something profoundly wrong when in the last two years, the 14 
wealthiest people in America saw their wealth increase by $156 billion, more wealth than is owned by the bottom 130 million Americans. This is an economy which is rigged, which is designed to benefit the people on top. And together, we are going to create an economy that works for all people, not just a handful of billionaires. looking for work 
and the millions of people who are working part-time when they want to work full-time. And when you add that together, it turns out that real unemployment in America is about 10.5%. That means there are millions of people living in desperation, wanting to work, who cannot work. And let me tell you something that is hardly ever discussed. One of the kind of fun things about running for president is you can bring issues out from under the rug and demand discussion. And let me tell you, Other candidates may not talk about it, the media may not report it. But let me tell you about an American tragedy today, and that is the unacceptably high rate of youth unemployment. Youth unemployment. A couple of months ago, I asked the Economic Policy Institute to take a look at what real youth unemployment is. That means people who have no jobs, looking for jobs, or working part-time. And they looked at high school graduates between the ages of 17 and 20. And this is what they found. If those kids were white, real unemployment was 33%. If the kids were Hispanic, real unemployment, 36%. If the kids were African American, real unemployment, 51%. This is an issue that cannot continue to be ignored. connected to the fact that we have more people in jail than any other country, you would be sorely mistaken. It seems to me to make a lot more sense to be investing in education and jobs than incarceration and jail.
And when we talk about fair wages, I would hope that every man in this audience will stand with women demanding pay equity.
If that woman and her family have sufficient income, that mom and that dad can stay home and love that baby, get to know that baby, bond with that baby, and all of you who are parents know what an extraordinary moment that is in our lives. And if, if that mom and family have income, she can stay home with that baby for weeks and months as she should be able to do. But, 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 there are moms who just gave birth today in LA, who just gave birth today in my state of Vermont, who don't have a lot of money. And those moms, because they lack money, will be forced to go back to work in one week or two weeks. They will be separated. They will be, they will be separated from their babies in the most important moments of that baby's life and the mom's life. That is not a family value. And that is why I will fight to have the United States join virtually every country on earth and guarantee at least 12 weeks of paid family leave. of seeing a situation where a kid is sick, but mom can't stay home because she doesn't have any paid sick leave. That's got to end. And at a time when, as a result of the collapse of the American middle class, our people are working the longest hours of any people in a major country on earth. 85% of male workers are working more than 40 hours a week. 65% of women workers working more than 40 hours a week. A hundred years ago, workers marched through the streets demanding a 40 hour work week. We haven't reached it yet. Every worker in this country deserves at least two weeks paid vacation. When we talk about the economy, whenever pollsters go out and they call you up and they say, well, what is, what is the issue? uppermost on your mind. And invariably, what people say is the issue of jobs. People understand that if you are 55 years of age today, you may go to work tomorrow, and your employer may say, well, I'm really sorry we have to let you go, but we're hiring somebody half your age at half your pay. And if you are young, a high school graduate, or if you are a new college graduate, you know how hard it is to find a job commensurate with your education. So when real youth unemployment is over 40%, when general national unemployment is over 10%. We need a massive federal jobs program to put our people back to work. And the fastest and most effective way to do that 
is to take a look at our crumbling infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our water systems, our wastewater plants, our rail, our airports, and when we rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, we can create with a one trillion dollar investment, 13 million good paying jobs. But when we talk about jobs, it is not just creating new jobs, it is making sure we do not continue to lose jobs. Since 2001, we have lost almost 60,000 factories in America, millions of good paying jobs. And the major reason for that is a disastrous trade policy. which has allowed corporate America to shut down here and move our jobs abroad. We need a trade policy which creates good paying jobs here, protects poor people abroad, not just making billions for CEOs. continue to help lead the fight against the TPP. When we use words like greed, dishonesty, arrogance, recklessness, these are just some of the words to describe Wall Street. As a result of the greed and recklessness and illegal behavior on Wall Street, this country was plunged into the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. Millions of people lost their jobs, lost their homes, lost their life savings. I find it interesting that a kid who smokes marijuana can get an arrest record, but the CEOs who help destroy the economy get away with it. because they were too big to fail. We need a financial system which provides affordable loans to small and medium-sized businesses to help us create jobs. We don't need a financial system which is an island unto itself designed only to make huge profits for a handful of people. In my view, in my view, not only do we have to reestablish Glass-Steagall legislation, but more importantly, we have to understand that if a bank is too big to fail, it is too big to exist. We ought to break it up. Brothers and sisters, 
let me be as blunt as I can in telling you that as a result of the disastrous Supreme Court decision in the Citizens United case, the American political system has been totally corrupted and the foundations of American democracy are being undermined. By a five to four Supreme Court decision, what the Supreme Court said to the wealthiest people in this country, they said, guys, you already own much of the economy. Now we're going to give you the opportunity to own the United States government, and that is what they are trying to do right now. When you have one family, one family, the Koch brothers, a family, an extreme right-wing family that believes we should end Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the Environmental Protection Agency. When you have one family spending more money in this election cycle than either the Democrats or the Republicans. Brothers and sisters, you're not talking about democracy. You're talking about oligarchy, and we have got to stop that. Public funding of elections. 